Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. So today I am going to be doing my January reading wrap up and to just address the obvious question that people are going to have, where are my glasses? I'm wearing contacts today. I wear contacts like maybe once a month today. It was prompted because it's snowing a lot and I'd go shovel and shoveling or using a snowblower I should say. With glasses is more difficult because 99% of the time snow ends up blowing in my face and then I can't see in my glasses so it's always easier with contacts. And now I'm dressed up because I'm going out for my friend's birthday. So January was a good reading month for me. January generally is a good reading month for me because it's cold and I don't want to leave my house and so I usually end up reading more on average. So this month I ended up finishing six books, three of which I've already talked about in other videos so I'm gonna just briefly go over those first. So first is Zora Neale Hurston's Jonah's Gourd Vine. I am working my way through a Zora Neale Hurston box set and so I'm trying to read at least one per month. And so this is the one I picked up in January. This is her first published novel. I talked about this in my Friday Reads video at the beginning of the month. Another book I talked about in that Friday Reads video was After the Lights Go Out by John Vircher. This honestly might be my favorite book of the month. It's a toss up between this and the last book I'll probably talk about in this video. But I was thoroughly surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. And so yeah, definitely go check out the Friday Reads video for more information about this book. But I definitely think this one flew under the radar last year and I really enjoyed it. And then the other book I mentioned in that video was All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thanka Matthews. This is actually the first book I finished in the new year. I finished this on January 1st and I read this as part of the Hope Punk book club. I'll have a link to that up in the cards as well as down in the description as well. I also talked about this briefly in that Friday Reads video. So yeah, definitely check out those videos if you are interested in more thoughts on this book. I, this one I enjoyed. I had some quibbles with it, but overall I really enjoyed this book as well. All right, now on to the other books that I have finished in January. First, I have Vera Kelly Lost and Found by Rosalie Necht. This is a historical kind of mystery series? It's hard to say. This one feels a little bit less like a mystery than the other two books. The first book in the series is Who is Vera Kelly and the second book in the series is, is Vera Kelly is not a mystery. In this book it takes place in 1971. Vera Kelly is dating a woman and they're living in New York City. The girl that she's dating is originally from California and she ends up heading back to California with Vera because some stuff is going down with her family. It turns out that she was kind of like disowned by her her family for being a lesbian and so she's kind of been no contact with them but then like some stuff goes down so she decides to fly back with Vera and it's not until they arrive in California that Vera really realizes like how wealthy her girlfriend's family is and that there might be some more stuff going on than she might realize and things like that and she might be a little bit over her head. And I'm not gonna say more than that. This book is relatively short and the reason why I feel like this one is less of a mystery is because there were multiple points in the story where I thought that something was revealed and then I was like okay so this is going to be the mystery and then it never was the mystery it was just something that happened and then the thing <laughs> happens that I'm not going to spoil and I was like oh so this is the mystery but then it resolves pretty quickly and in my head pretty easily. This is a book that feels like it should have had like another 50 pages or so on it because it just like resolves and then you're like okay I guess this is over now and so this is probably like my least favorite out of the three books like I liked the first book I really liked the second book and then this one pretty much let me down so yeah if you're someone who's read the other books in this series do you have to pick up this one no not necessarily but I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt very much <laughs> if you do read it because it is pretty short although I could see a lot of people getting annoyed by this one just because it feels more aimless than the other books are but like at the same time if you've read the even the first book you know that this leans more on like the literary historical side of things and not so much on the mystery side of things so I feel like again if you just like have your expectations of like not really wanting too much of a mystery in these books then you'll enjoy this but these series do get marketed as a mystery or at least they did in the beginning I don't I don't know if they necessarily should have that marketing attached to it so yeah like it was fine, 
but it was a little bit of a letdown. Next, I read Debating Darcy by Sanya Tani Dasgupta, and this is actually one that I listened to as an audiobook. I got the audiobook from Hoopla through my library. This, if you couldn't tell, is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. You are following this character named Leela, who is a speech competitor. She ends up meeting this guy named Furrows Darcy, who goes to a different school, like a private school, that's also part of the competitions. They meet in kind of awkward circumstances circumstances and she ends up like eventually like switching to the debate side of things which is where he competes uh and you know kind of facing off with him so yeah I had like mixed feelings about this book like part of me really enjoyed this because I just love like Pride and Prejudice storytellings in general like even the ones that are not great I'll like consume but this isn't necessarily like my favorite version of it I do like some of the updates that they do with some of the characters. No spoilers or anything, but if you've read Pride and Prejudice, you know what I'm going to be implying. But like the stuff with like Wickham and Lydia and all this stuff, like there are some changes and updates that are made to uh, address maybe some of the more quote unquote problematic parts of it. And I kind of do enjoy that. Do I really like feel anything for the Lizzie and Darcy characters in this book? No, not necessarily. I really like the way that they handle like the Charlotte storyline, even like the Jane storyline and stuff like that. Like I'm not gonna go into all the details, but like there are parts of this that I found really cute. And again, just like listening to it as an audiobook in the background, like I don't have to think too hard about it because I basically know the plot, but it is kind of fun to see. So of like the updates and the twists that are made. So yeah, this is like a fine read. It's not necessarily something where I'm like, yes, definitely go pick it up. I feel like if it wasn't a Pride and Prejudice retelling, it wouldn't be that strong of a book. So you like need to have read Pride and Prejudice first, in my opinion. And that's like sort of the part that makes it fun. But otherwise, like, it's fine. Is it great? No, it's not my favorite Pride and Prejudice retelling. But I still think it was a fun one to pick up. All right. And the final book that I finished in the month of January was Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I am so excited that I ended up finishing this book because I you know have this like low-key goal of trying to finish series but also I've just been really enjoying this series and so I'm glad I had the time to finish this chunker. So in case you aren't aware this is the third and final book in the Greenbone saga. The first book being Jade City, the second one being Jade War, and the last one being Jade Legacy. And so I obviously won't go into like details about the plot of this book since it is the third and final book in the series and it'll spoil things from the first one. But I will say that overall I really enjoyed this series. I think that what Fonda Lee does is really like beautiful and like you could tell like the amount of like care that you put into like the plotting and the character sort of development and things like that. This one might be my least favorite of the series because of the fact that there are a lot of like time jumps in here. I think I talked about this when I talked about Jade War, but I think that like the titles of the books really do a good job of like summing up what the books are about. So like the first book, Jade City, literally an introduction so it's introducing you to the city as well as like the main characters and this world that you are going to be existing in for this series and then you know stuff happens and so then you move into Jade War which is literally about those people like being in, at war like you're following these various like gangs and gangsters and stuff like that as they're under war and so like the entire second book just feels like stressful and conflict and things like that and then this last book Jade Legacy is about the legacy of both these clans as well as like Jade as a product and how it's used and things like that and so the time jumps make sense because you're trying to cover a lot and trying to show like what's going to happen in the future or like set it up to show like okay th this is going to be now the next generation on how they handle things and so that requires you jumping in time quite a bit but it does feel like a lot of time passes and so you just have to know that like these things happen and like she does a good job of like making sure that you as a reader understand like okay it's now been this many years and so you can know that like this person is now in high school and like this character has finished this job and all this stuff and like things have happened but obviously nothing you should know nothing substantial has happened but time jumps are always just a little bit harder for me to not necessarily wrap my head around but I think it sometimes cheats some of the character development and especially like with the first two books you see a lot of really good character development. I will say that the ending made me cry a little bit not like the very end but some of the things that happened towards the end of this 
book made me cry a little bit. I'm not gonna say more than that. But yeah, it, overall, like really enjoyed this. There were like some points in here where there were lulls. It, this happened to me in the second book as well, where they were just like lulls and there were like events happening and you're just like, why am I reading about this? And then she just like wraps it all up so well. Like the way that everything comes together at the end was just like, Mwah, chef's kiss, love it. So yeah, if you are someone who enjoys fantasy, specifically urban fantasy, and you don't mind things being on the slower side, I definitely recommend this series. And I also will say like, if you're someone who you get like halfway through this book and you're like, I'm bored, I don't get it. I will say like, keep going because there'll be something that'll hook you. She does a pretty good job of sprinkling in like really big events or really dramatic events to like pull you back in. And then also like all of the little things that she talks about all come together in the end. So yeah, this, this was a fantastic series. Highly recommend it. This is the other book where I'm like, was After the Lights Go Out or this one my favorite book? It might still be After the Lights Go Out, but this was a fantastic conclusion to a really great trilogy. So yeah, those are all of the books that I read in the month of January. I almost said February. Um, I'm currently reading Small Favors by Erin A. Craig and I'm really enjoying this one as well. I read her other book, House of Salt and Sorrows, a few years ago when that one came out and really enjoyed it. I think she does like atmospheric settings really really well and so this one definitely has like a very atmospheric eerie feel to it so can't wait to talk about this one in my February wrap up. But yeah, that is everything that I've got for this video. Let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of the books that I talked about here today and what your thoughts were on them. Or if you have any questions, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. Or just let me know what your favorite read of January was. How has the beginning of 2023 been for you reading wise? So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.